All right, fourth video in five days, and um, I've been getting an absolute litany of support on this, including um, four total views and zero total comments, so the motivation is strong. I'm currently showing more commitment to this channel than most guys are to their wives, so. With this in mind, it's time to finish up replication so we can eventually just get to partitioning transactions, and then we can finally do a database comparison. So, okay, let's go ahead and get ourselves into leaderless replication. Okay, so today we're going to be doing leaderless replication, which is the third type of replication that I will be discussing. Just to give it a quick overview, instead of doing what you do in multi-leader replication, where writes are still only going to one place and reads are only coming from one place, writes are actually going to be sent to every single replica in parallel, and reads are going to be taken from every single replica in parallel or at least a certain amount of them. The point is that um, unlike single leader and multi-leader replication, um, we're dealing with a lot of network calls at once here. Okay, so, you know, obviously I've just said that writes are going to go to a bunch of places at once, so it would be great if, um, you know, we can write every single node at a time. Let's assume there are like 100 nodes in our cluster and we want to write all of them. But the matter of fact is that a lot of these writes are probably going to fail. So how can we keep data up to date? Especially just because a lot of times a write is going to get to one place before it does another. Okay, well there are two ways of keeping data up to date. The first is anti-entropy, so we'll discuss that quickly. Anti-entropy is literally just a background process that looks at multiple nodes and their stored values. So let's assume we're using a key value store. And for every single key in the database, we're going to have a version number of how many times that key has been updated. And so anti-entropy is saying, use the background process, look at two nodes, and um, you know replace the, the outdated values on given nodes with the more updated values that it can find on other nodes. Okay, so anti-entropy is one way of doing things that not all leaderless databases actually use, but um, what most of them do certainly use is read repair. So the point of read repair is, like I mentioned, when you do a read, you're actually querying from multiple databases at once. And it's likely going to be the case that if these databases have older data, um, we want to make sure that we then update those databases with older data with the data from the newer database. So as you can see in the diagram below, I want to find the value of key Jordan. You can see in database 1 that I'm sexy, database 2 I'm cute, and in database 3 I'm mid. However, the most recent version is going to be the one with version number 20. So keeping this in mind, let's go ahead and say I make an actual read. So I'm going to take the argmax of all those version numbers and then you know, use that to find the corresponding value. So since uh, 20 is the highest version number, that means that the result is that Jordan equals sexy. And from my client, now I'm going to concurrently write that value back to database 2 and database 3. So you can see that it's now updated such that they're all having the proper value. Okay, so the issue here though is that what if we're making a bunch of parallel reads However, none of the databases that we're reading from actually have the most up-to-date data. This is where something called a quorum comes in. So imagine we have um, some sort of leaderless replication schema, and within that, there are n database nodes. Okay, so now I mentioned that when you write, you write um, to a certain amount of nodes in parallel. Let's say that the client only receives something saying their write was successful if at least w nodes are written to. So w, let's just call that a variable for now. And suppose also that a client only sees their read as being successful if at least R nodes are read from. So we have these three, um, these three variables, N, W, and R. So now we know that if W plus R is greater than N, so if the, the nodes that I have to be able to write to to have a successful write, and the nodes that I have to be able to read from to have a successful read, sum up to more than the number of nodes in the actual database pool itself, we know that one of the nodes that we'll be reading from has one of the most updated values, and then we can use read repair to update the other ones. So typically what you would do is you'd set n to be an odd number, so let's say n is 7, and then w and r are n plus 1 over 2. So that would mean that w and r are 4 in this case. If w and r are 4 and n is 7, that means we can uh, tolerate up to 3 replica failures, because we could still be able to successfully write to 4 nodes and also read from 4 nodes. Okay, to just illustrate this, in case the, the math that I just said doesn't instantly resonate, let's use that example I just mentioned of seven replicas with w equals four and r equals four. So let's say initially I try to write to all seven of these replicas, but only four of them work. So I'm gonna circle those four nodes that now have the updated value. Now let's say I'm gonna read from four nodes. 
No matter which four nodes I pick to read from, at least one of them is going to have the updated value. I could circle any of the four, and it is going to be the case that one of them is going to be in that white circle. So as you can see, I've chosen these four, and in this case, two of them have the most updated value, and then I can read repair the rest. The thing is, though, even though quorums give this illusion of a strongly consistent system where every single time you can get the most up-to-date value, it's not actually the case that that's always right. Why is that? Well, let's say we try to write to w nodes, but we end up only writing w minus 1 nodes. So we're not able to write to those four nodes. We can only write to three. The client doesn't see that their write was successful. In fact, they get a message saying that their write failed. However, the issue with this is that those nodes that they did successfully write to are not going to roll back. So now we have an incorrect write that's actually been propagated on a few of the nodes, and it's kind of unclear what we should do there. Should we try and roll that back eventually? Should we keep it? Because then there might be read repair and that value might get propagated along. It's kind of unclear and it puts the database um, in an inconsistent state. Um, okay, two is that if you restore a failed node with an up-to-date key value pair, um, from an older node, then now that node is no longer going to have an up-to-date key and value, and that quorum parameter of w, which you might have satisfied earlier on a write, but then once the node crashes and comes back up, is no longer satisfied, now only w minus one nodes have the correct value, and there's no guarantee you're going to read the most correct value anymore. Um, three is that you can still have write conflicts. I'll demonstrate a race condition right after this that can happen even using quorums, and as a result, it can lead to an inconsistent state in the database. And four is something called sloppy quorums, which I'll discuss in a little bit. Okay, so here's the example of a write conflict. Let's say that me and my angry ex-girlfriend are both on Facebook, and we're both posting because we're, we're, you know, flustered. I'm trying to tell everyone I'm sexy, she's trying to tell everyone I'm ugly. So I'm going to write to both databases at once because this is a leaderless configuration. Okay, she's also going to be doing the same. So what first happens is that my first write is going to reach database one first, and as you can see, that has version number one for the key Jordan of sexy, whereas she says that I'm ugly. However, our writes become interleaved. It just so happens to be the case that my write to database two gets there after her write to database two, and my write to database one gets there before her write to database one. So now we have two conflicting values, where database one thinks that the version uh, the version value of 2 for Jordan is ugly, and DB2 thinks the version value of 2 for Jordan is sexy. So when the anti-entropy process or read repair comes back, it doesn't know which is actually the correct value. They actually have the same version number, which is pretty problem problematic. Um, and as a result of this, this you know, problem right here, we're going to have to use um, conflict resolution algorithms like we discussed in the multi-leader replication video. Those still apply here. Okay, now onwards to sloppy quorums. So here's an example I've provided where I am a software engineer at Facebook. And let's say we have a cluster of 99 database replicas where all of my profile data is going to be stored. And this is my profile data, other users' profile data, et cetera, et cetera. And we've chosen to have a quorum of w equals 50 and r equals 50, like I've been saying we should do. However, let's say all of the 99 profile nodes have crashed. So now we can no longer satisfy those quorum conditions, and I can no longer write to the profile and as a result of that, um, you know, the service might go down. However, you know, pretty cheekily of me, I've decided that just so the data stays durable and just so writes can go through, um, that I am going to reroute all of those profile writes to um, databases that would actually be holding the Facebook Messenger data. So now the writes are going to a different place than they would normally. However, they're still durable. The stuff that I'm writing is going to be there. But if I'm going to end up reading from those profile replicas once they come back up, I'm actually not going to see the changes I made until eventually we can perform something called a hint hinted handoff and transfer all the data back to the correct replicas. OK, um, in conclusion, even though leaderless replication isn't terribly hard to reason about, um, it can work quite well in practice um, using cross data center solutions. So basically, you know, if I want to run a quorum with a cross data center solution, let's say I have 100 total nodes in the system and 10 data centers and 10 nodes per data center, I might set um, the right parameter to equal 10 or something. However, again, that means that you have to read from a ton of nodes, so read becomes very slow because you have to do a ton of reads in parallel and possibly even perform read repair. Um, in addition, even though, again, like writes are going to be faster here, you still have to reason about write conflicts in the same way that you would with multi-leader replication. 
And then finally, quorums are not perfect for all of the reasons I just discussed. Even though it seems like they might provide strong consistency between race conditions, sloppy quorums, and the fact that rights don't actually get rolled back when they fail, uh, quorums do not actually provide a completely consistent database system. So as a result, leaderless replication can be very, very good for achieving high write throughput. However, it does lead to some issues when it comes to consistency across the